ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? Pussy cat dolls. Hi everyone, my name is Tyler Oakley and I'm here with the one and only Janet Ma. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I get to be here with you and calm down. Just. <laughs> so for the people at home who might not know you, describe yourself in three words. Oh my God, that's really hard. You started with, oh my God, that's it. Oh my, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Tell the people at home what you do. I'm a writer. I, I, I tell stories largely about feminism, about gender, about trans rights, about all of the things. My new book, Surpassing Certainty, is about my um, my 20s, about the experience in my life where I really took the time to concentrate on myself before thinking about advocating or um, helping anyone else. I love that. I can't wait to read it. It's adorable. The cover is beautiful. Oh. Right? Look at this. Look at us. Take <laughs> And it's available on Audible. Thank you, Audible, for sponsoring this video. You can get it on Audible. If you use audible.com slash Tyler Oakley, you can get your first book free. I would obviously get this book. Or your first book's on Audible, too. It is. So you have options. There's no excuse. You can get that or any other title. If you use audible.com slash Tyler Oakley, you get your first 30 days free. Again, go support Jana Mock. Iconic, beautiful, stunning, hilarious, etc. So today I wanted to chat with you because I, I look up to you in so many ways and I learn from you in so many ways about ways to be a better ally because I feel like there's no better way to learn than to hear from the person you want to be an ally to themselves. Mm. So let's chat. Yes. What are some ways that you think people can be better and more helpful and use their privilege for good for the trans community. I think that one of the most important things is a recognition that ally is not a noun, right? It's not something that you put on a bump bumper sticker or on a button or you like wave a flag for. It is uh, action, mm. it's a verb. It's something that in involves you taking your education upon yourself and using that education to check and challenge the spaces and the conversations that you're engaged in. And it's not like you are that. Yeah. Like once you did something, mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. it's like you have to keep yeah. doing it. And then that. also in a part of keep doing it is you're taking a risk and you're being vulnerable and you're putting yourself out there. And then the next layer of that is to realize that the people that you're looking to partner with are not the folk who have to educate you about their experience. Yeah. You need to take that work and do that education on your own. You have Google. Mm -hmm. um, or Bing. Ask Jeeves. <laughs> yeah. You don't want as a partner or an ally um, to a marginalized folk, you don't want to go and make them have to do that work for you. You don't want right. to make them have to do the one-on-one -on -one work for you because then it takes away from their resources and their time to do the work that they need to do to work toward their own liberation and freedom. Another great point is too that being a partner and an ally looks so many different ways that you can donate your time, you can donate your, your resources, you can signal boost, you can show up to protests, you can help people People who are protesting by bringing pizzas. You know, there's I so love many. That. Yeah, there's so many ways that we can be useful. That is the cool thing about the internet is that there are many different ways for you to find your outlet. Like, you don't have to be a YouTuber. You don't have to have a podcast. You don't have to be a writer. But find what you do, and if there are ways to infiltrate that with goodness for the mm. world of being a voice or an amplifier of voices within your own little world. It's just finding ways that you can be a better ally with it, however you are in the world. I think a big thing too that we have this thing called call out culture in the sense that people love to find a moment when someone has messed up and hold them accountable to that moment forever and ever and ever and not see that they've changed and evolved and grown. And so I think that accountability is great, but I think that we also have to learn a sense of kindness, I think, and compassion mm -hmm. that we're all individuals who are having a human experience that are gonna mess up and all that stuff. Are there specific things, if somebody wants to be a better ally to trans people, mm. that should just be no-brainers to yeah. them? So I can list them off really quickly. One is to realize that all of us have our own gender identities and sexual orientations, that we all come to that. Um, number two is that we should not expect people to come out um, to them or explain themselves. Number three is to respect people's privacy. Um, four is just to have some kind of tact and be respectful in the sense of don't ask people about their bodies and right. their medical histories because you like you wouldn't do that. ask anybody that yeah right you shouldn't right because we have to recognize that people's bodies and their identities are their own and they're not there to to satiate or to satisfy our grandest curiosities mm. again you can go to google and search all of the surgeries that you want to search look at all of the bodies that you want to search for it's <laughs> if not that's stuff. your mo you yes, can do that i'll well. put all the links in the description below people to follow organizations to support mm -hmm. 
any ways that you can get involved because having those voices on your timeline really does change how you think. Yeah, and it's really powerful to have these people in your lives every single day in this space, especially like for a lot of folks, there's a sense of that most people don't know a trans person. Mm -hmm. And so what the internet does so well is that it enables you to know trans people on so many different levels. How important are pronouns, especially with not misgendering people because mm -hmm. a lot of people are like oh what's the big deal but because gender is such a building block for the ways in which we categorize and um, interact with one another pronouns become one of the first things that people make assumptions about mm -hmm. about all of us you see someone with short hair you assume that they're a man you see someone without even thinking like that's without... just that's how your brain works exactly and so to know this is to, to recognize that we all make these assumptions every single day and so one of the greatest things we can do in an interpersonal space when we introduce ourselves is to say I'm Janet, and I use she and her pronouns. God bless. <laughs> I'm you, Tyler, I use he, him pronouns. See, and so then you Easy. set the tone in that way. And so it's a great kind of situation where you're not expecting the person that you're introducing yourself to to tell you that stuff. Instead, you put yourself in that space to say, even though I may be a cisgender person, that I'm going to make myself vulnerable enough to, to pronounce and proclaim who I know myself to be. A lot of our people are not heard in the ways in which we're able to be heard, and so... I feel really lucky and blessed that I get to do this work. Well, I appreciate that you are in the world. I appreciate the work that you do. Where can people find you? They can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Yes, at yes. Janet Mom. I'll put all the links below. Become her friend, follow her on Twitter, get the books, listen to the podcasts. You will fall in love. If you've never met Janet before, have Janet all over your timelines. You will love her. That's all. Oh, thank you, of course. Thank you for hanging out today. Thank of you course. for sharing your wisdom. Thank you for having we me. We love you. I love you too. Shut up. Okay, we'll see you guys later. Bye, friends. Bye.